In 2004, the majority of dental schools and professional dental associations are still assuring their students and members that dental amalgam is safe. So dentists, in good conscience, will expose themselves, their staff and their patients to levels of mercury vapour in their dental surgeries that would cause a factory to be shut down. Dentists are regularly exposed to between 50 and 4,000 micrograms of mercury per cubic metre in the course of their working day. This constitutes a hazardous working environment with serious and even tragic implications. A huge study of 9,241 dentists and dental personnel revealed twice as many glioblastomas, that's a form of brain cancer, as was found in the general population. Female dental personnel have roughly twice the rate of other women of infertility, miscarriage, birth defect, stillbirths and disturbed menstruation. Dentists score poorly in the areas of complex attention, psychomotor tasks and mental health. They show reduced concentration, emotional instability and their fine motor function is seriously affected. Some motor tremor, 90%. Some psychomotor dysfunction, 41%. Severe psychomotor dysfunction, 16%. Impaired immediate recall, 58%. Impaired auditory memory, 84%. Visual memory reduced, 52%. Vigilance, attention, concentration and cognitive comprehension, 52%. Work and lives felt to be pointless, 36%. Tactile sensory dysfunction, inability to locate finger position, 52%. Logical thinking and story recall impaired, 79%. Spatial and visual memory impaired, 68%. History of unsatisfying interpersonal relationships, 27%. Out of normal range on emotional stability scale, 72%. Suicidal depression, disgust with life, despondency and despair, 27%. Increased state of agitation, 30%. Increased scores on psychopathic scale, 42%. These are all symptoms of mercury poisoning. The study concludes that after five years in the profession, dentists' IQ levels drop about one standard deviation below the rest of the population. This is an enormous and significant drop. Amalgam removal has been shown to be effective in reducing mercury levels to the levels of those in people without amalgam fillings. What you are seeing is the typical method of removing an amalgam filling as performed in dental surgeries throughout the world and as still taught in universities today. Cutting an amalgam filling immediately produces very high levels of mercury vapour in the mouth. Measurements 18 inches from the mouth in this procedure reveal levels of mercury vapour of 4,000 micrograms per cubic metre. Cutting an amalgam filling also produces a vast cloud of microscopic amalgam particles. These particles are easily inhaled all the way to the alveoli of the lungs, the final interface between the environment, air and your blood. The longer the drill is touching the filling, the more mercury vapour and particles are being released. Most dental schools teach this as the way to remove dental amalgam. If you open your eyes during this procedure, you'll most likely see the dentist and dental nurse wearing a paper mask or no mask at all. What most dental personnel don't realise is that a paper mask offers minimal protection. Mercury vapour passes through the mask and microscopic particles adhere to the mask. The temperature of the breath vaporises the mercury in these particles and concentrates the mercury vapour inside the mask more highly than in the surrounding air. With reference to the fact that mercury is a multipotent toxin with effects on several levels of the biochemical dynamics of the cell, amalgam must be considered to be an unsuitable material for dental restorations. 
This is especially true since fully adequate and less toxic alternatives are available. The safety margin it was thought existed with respect to mercury exposure from dental amalgam has been erased. The no observable effects level is the lowest concentration of a substance in the environment that does not cause any observable effects in the human body. According to the World Health Organization, the Noel for mercury is zero. This means that exposure to any level of mercury, no matter how minute the quantity, constitutes a serious and avoidable risk to human health. There is no level of mercury in a room or a mouth that can be considered safe. By now you can see that mercury dramatically impacts human health and that mercury contamination primarily comes from so-called silver dental amalgams, which actually are 50% mercury. Mercury also is absorbed through the fish we eat and from airborne pollution from coal-fired power plants. Naturally, occupational exposure can create greater risks such as dentistry or certain manufacturing processes. Properly testing and treating mercury toxicity is essential. Routine tests of blood, urine, and hair are inaccurate for indicating mercury contamination of body tissues, as can be seen in these examples. Here, you can see a lab report from a person presenting with significant symptoms whose doctors ordered a blood test for lead, arsenic, and mercury, all of which showed negative or no contamination. Soon thereafter, this individual took the proper test, called a DMPS provoked urine challenge. Now, you can see that she has significant mercury coming out through her urine. Also, this is an example of the special urine test as compared to a hair analysis on the same person. See how the mercury shows low in the hair and high in the urine. At Merck Out International, we have performed a provoked urine challenge on thousands of individuals. In recent testing of a group of over 800 people ages 18 through 80, we found that over 90% had elevated or very elevated levels of mercury. The respected U.S. laboratory doctor's data was used to analyze these urine challenge test results. Here is an example of the lab's color-coded test results that makes it easy for you to review with your patient. As you can see, the bar either goes into the green or safe zone, the yellow or elevated zone, or the red zone indicating very elevated levels of mercury. In our studies, 75% of the results were in the red zone were so elevated as to be off the bar chart. The provoked urine challenge is not only the gold standard test for mercury, it also is easy for people to perform. The key to this test is the oral chelating agent DMPS. This agent grabs onto or binds mercury as well as arsenic and lead where they are hiding in the tissue and removes them through the urine for analysis in the laboratory. The test takes just two hours and can be performed in your office or in the comfort of an individual's home. The urine sample is shipped by air courier to an independent lab for analysis and a report is sent back by email. So what can be done? If the results are elevated and there is a recommendation from the doctor to reduce mercury, then the person under the direction of his or her doctor should begin a mercury detoxification program. Until now, the main way to remove mercury from the body has been through intravenous chelation therapy in a physician's office with costs in both time and money. Now, there is an oral program to remove mercury and other toxic metals in the comfort and privacy of their home with no IVs necessary. The Merck Out 30-Day Detoxification Program has undergone clinical testing in medical centers on two continents with excellent results, both in safety and effectiveness. This program was designed and tested by medical doctors and is the only such oral treatment program in the world. Merck Out is manufactured in New Zealand in a modern GMP certified facility licensed to produce both dietary supplements and pharmaceutical products. One 30-day detoxification program delivers to the body the equivalent of eight intravenous DMPS therapies. It is important to emphasize that it is not necessary to have your amalgams removed before undergoing testing and treatment. Many people are able to achieve significant improvement in their symptoms and then find a dentist to safely remove their amalgams to re be replaced by composites or the white filling according to their budget. This detoxification program is physician monitored and is designed to be done under the care, supervision, and guidance of a physician, knowledgeable